Good evening and welcome to the Or News broadcast. I'm Daniel Cook, your host for the English edition, Monday through Saturday at 6 p.m. In today's news, nearly five years have passed since the murder of four police officers on the beach of Duras by Dritan Daiti. The prosecution of serious crimes has read the pretense to the accused, seeking life imprisonment for him. The prosecutor of the case, Ardian Neja, read 78 full pages of the pretense, according to which Daiti is found guilty of the murder of four police officers who were killed in an operation for the arrest of the wanted Dritan Daiti. Dritan Daiti, for five years, has challenged the justice system since a normal judicial process was not established for him because the lawyers refused to defend him. In these conditions, from the 29th of December of 2009 until the 1st of July 2014, the court postponed 275 sessions. This judicial process has gone down in the history of the Albanian justice system for the manner that it was conducted before a decision could be made. Dritan Daiti is accused of killing the police officers Fatos Jani, Saimir Duj Kolori, Altin Dizdari, and Kastriot Feskai. It is learned that during the trial, which was held behind closed doors, the court revoked the defendant's decision to be represented by a lawyer, since he was present in the hall. The prosecution was prepared, has prepared its final conclusions, thus paving the way for the completion of the trial. The reaction of Dritan Daiti is expected with great interest, because it is his turn to prepare the final conclusions of his defense. With the pretense of the prosecution, perhaps this process is about to end, if there are surprises, if there are no surprises from Daiti. For five years, Daiti has instigated very unexpected things. He has also threatened the judge Idris Mulkurti and his family. For five years, Daiti has requested an attorney to represent him, since the lawyers appointed by the court have refused to defend him for different reasons. The Foreign Minister of Greece has said that the issue of the maritime border with Greece will play a role in Albania's EU negotiations. The Minister of Foreign Affairs of Greece, Evangelos Venizelos, admitted yesterday that the opening of negotiations between Albania and the European Union will be related to the issue of maritime borders between our country and Greece. The senior Greek official hinted that this is a condition to be fulfilled by our country. In a press conference, in which he gave a summary of the results of the Greek presidency of the European Union that ended on the 30th of June, Venizelos stressed that this agreement is an important part of determining the exclusive economic zones, based on international law for the sea. He said, To reach the start of the negotiations, all the criteria of Copenhagen must be met, all the evidence and papers for the acceptance of documents. It has to do with the international law and the international law of the sea. And when it comes to the European Union, the Council of Ministers of the Union votes on the new strategy for maritime safety and insists on the importance of marine areas and the international law of the sea. And it means something, because the 28 member countries of the EU, of course, accept the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea under the international law for the sea, said Venizelos. He expressed satisfaction about Albania receiving the candidate status. Several weeks ago, the Greek foreign minister was attacked by the nationalists for supporting Albania in obtaining the status. He explained that the opening of negotiations for Albania is something quite different from getting the candidate status. There is a misconception, he said. What the Council of Ministers decided on the 24th of June is not the opening of a accession negotiation with Albania but it merely offered the candidate status for membership. This is something that is completely different, said Venizelos. Today, Italy takes over the six-month EU presidency from Greece, as it was previously determined. The main agenda item of the Italian presidency is assumed to be the economy, 
in terms of pushing for growth, austerity, and migration, which represents a sizable crisis, especially for the Medi Mediterranean members. According to the data, more than 50,000 people have arrived in Italy by boat from North Africa this year alone. The Greek EU presidency started on January 1st and ended after 57 ministerial meetings, 67 political agreements, the approval of Albania's EU candidacy, and the EU adoption of a joint strategy on maritime security. The Greek Prime Minister, Anto Antonis Samaras, spoke at a conference hall in Athens, stating that Greece promoted policies and strategies to deepen the economic and banking union. He also said that Greece will support its neighbor Italy. Italy's presidential term is starting at a critical time, when the presidents of both the European Commission and the European Parliament are about to be determined. In these decisive days, Italy is giving signs of changing the direction of the European policy priorities. The Italian Prime Minister, Matteo Renzi, desires a, quote, United States of Europe. He is quoted as saying, For my children's future, I dream, think, and work for the United States of Europe. Mr. Renzi delivered messages about the future of Europe in his speech in Florence last week. He sees a stronger and more co cohesive Europe as the only solution to solving the current problems of the EU. Sandro Gucci from the Secretary of State Council of Ministers also emphasized the need for change, stating that we do not intend to take a crucial role ourselves, but want to turn all of Europe to the new political priorities through the introduction of a more effective method of management and decision making. Latvia will be the next president of the EU in the first half of 2015, followed by Luxembourg in the second half of 2015. The chairman of the Democratic Party, Lula Zimbasha, attended the party's assembly elections in the town of Fushkruya. As usual, he addressed his party at the event. One year after the rotation policy, nothing is new to be seen. Nothing good, only deterioration in every field, starting with the citizens' pockets and tables, he said. From Fushkruya, where he participated in the electoral assembly of the Democrats, the chairman of the Democratic Party emphasized that by choosing the leaders of the Democratic Party through a free vote, they will make the party stronger and more reliable. Mr. Basha stressed that the Democratic Party will remain free as it was born and as it grew up in the storms of the political upheavals of the 90s. It will expand the dimension of freedom because according to the leader of the Democrats, there is no other way to go forward. The free vote has been at the core of our organization since the day we were first born, and using it responsibly and intelligently, making it the basis of any decision regarding the organization and career of the Democratic Party, we will manage to make the party stronger, more consolidated, more reliable, with more respect from the citizens, as well as from the international partners, said Basha. Today, more than ever, said Mr. Basha, the citizens expect the Democrats to restore hope because under the governance of the Rama Meta duo, only deterioration and uncertainty are noticed across the country. In these 10 months of deep popular frustration, under the wrong government, governance of the Rama Meta duo, there have been extraordinary dimensions. Fraud, injustice, and deterioration are felt everywhere. A year after the rotation of the policy, nothing new nothing good has occurred. But instead, things have become worse in every field, starting with the pockets and desks of the citizens, continuing with the prospect of tomorrow, the safety of life and democracy in the country. There is deterioration in all areas, Basha said. For the first time, a camp of volunteers has been established for cleaning up Albania's beaches. The purpose is to end what Prime Minister Rama calls a shameful tradition, the pollution of the beaches with garbage. Prime Minister Rama said, 
It is a new program that we put in place for the first time that aims to end a very embarrassing tradition which put, puts us all as a society and as a country in a terrible position, even in front of foreign visitors with dirty beaches. Anything that is consumed is thrown into the sand of the beaches where there is no care for the environment, said Prime Minister Rama. This initiative was launched for the first time in Golem, where the Prime Minister was present. It will be extended across the coastline. Volunteer camps are being planned as a collaboration of the armed forces, volunteers, and other members of civil society who want to be part of the action, not only to clean up the beaches, but also to discipline the vacationers all through the season. We must insist that, little by little, all the vacationers participate in this effort by not throwing rubbish wherever they want to, but ensuring that all remnants of their consumption is disposed of properly, said Rama. This would be a historic victory for a society that expects much more than that from tourism and for a country that wants to be renowned as a tourist spot. The first obstacle that we have is the garbage and our miserable culture concerning the relationship with the environment. But you can easily change this by thinking like we think about our houses. None of us throw the trash in the middle of the house, said the head of the government, Eddie Rama. Besides the cleaning, the initiative aims to install a culture of maintenance of the beaches. The volunteers of this project will be engaged in, uh, will in, be engaged in spreading this idea to vacationers through various methods, trying to give information and raise awareness. The government has said that they are very willing to review a, a proposition by the, by the opposition for the territorial administrative reform. The majority expressed benevolence and openness to reviewing the alternative version of the administrative territorial reform that will be proposed by the opposition. The deputy of the Socialist Movement for Integration, SMI, Patrit Vasili, expressed determination that the administrative territorial reform will be closed by the end of July. He said that the condition that the opposition gave to accompany this reform with decentralization is abnormal. The deputy of the SMI reiterated that this reform does not conceal any political goals or interests. The majority has already finalized the basis of the administrative territorial reform, and it is in a final process of consultations with the local governments and stakeholders. The opposition rejects the plan of the government and has launched a series of meetings and conferences that will culminate with the presentation of an alternative project. The opposition MPs have returned to the activities of the Assembly one week after they started their boycott. The draft of the Ombudsman was discussed at today's meeting. The draft was sent to the People's Advocate. We offer independence to the institution of Ombudsman, said the Vice Minister of Justice, Alban Isarai, during this speech. Attending the commission, the Ombudsman Igli Totazani said that he supports the initiative of the Ministry of Justice. The Socialist Party Deputy, Vasily Kahusi, emphasized that the bill required a qualified majority to be approved. The Democrat deputies attended today's meeting of the Law Committee, the Production Activities Committee, and the Social Affairs Committee after a political decision several days ago to boycott the parliamentary activities. They made this choice in protest against the decision of the Bureau of the Assembly to suspend Sali Berisha from taking part in the proceedings of the Parliament for 10 days after insults that he used in the plenary session on the 19th of June, addressed to the deputies of the majority. Now that Albania has received the candidate status, the main obligation for the country is the judicial reform. However, the Albanian institutions are not reaching consensus about the appointment of the Supreme Court judges. The appointment process for three judges in this court 
remains stagnant because of disagreement between the President and the Parliament. Although consultations have already been held by the head of state with the leaders of the parliamentary groups about the selection criteria for the Supreme Court members, the majority thinks that the President's approach to this process is far from Nishani's obligation for implementing the Parliament's competences and for approving the decrees about appointments of Supreme Court judges. For this reason, the two parliamentary groups of the, of the majority, the Socialist Party and the Socialist Movement for Integration, addressed a letter to the President in which they appealed to him once again to implement his legal obligations for this process. They suggest the reopening of the selection process for the new appointments to the Supreme Court. Gramoz Rucci and Patrit Vassili presented a series of legal arguments to the President, which according to them should be taken into consideration. Rucci and Vassili uh, reminded the President of the decision of the Constitutional Court, which according to them calls for the selection of the Supreme Court members through a loyal and institutional cooperation between the Parliament and the President. In the letter sent to Nishani, the head of the majority underlines that the, the President is required to conduct a selective process based on legal criteria and not based on personal perceptions or political preferences. The President's consultations with the, with the parliamentary groups have avoided the discussion of the additional criteria, which are based on the list of candidates as dictated by the legal amendments. The President's meetings have been formal, and they have not recognized the completion level of the objective criteria for each of the candidates that Nishani has selected. Convinced that the candidates for the Supreme Court need to fulfill the highest levels of quality, and convinced that the corruption which is found everywhere in the state, and especially in the judiciary, needs the commitment of judges with moral and professional integrity, Rucci and Vassili asked the President to review his stance on this process. They said, so that he will not be held hostage by the previous lists of candidates, the majority requests the reopening of the candidacies for the Supreme Court members. We trust that the finding of characters with moral and professional integrity is a question that belongs to the President, and it's a huge constitutional, legal, moral, and political responsibility of the Parliament. The public finances are going to be managed better in the next six years, according to the new draft strategy. Public finances will be more disciplined in the coming six years, and the cost of the budget will be under better control. This was announced during the first presentation of the draft strategy of 2014 through 2020 of the public financial management in the presence of the international experts. The Minister of Finance, Shkelchim Tsani, stated that this strategy will affect the, ma the macroeconomic stability. The new strategy of the public finance management pro uh, projects that the key initiatives of the reform will be implemented by 2020. He said, we have already begun implementing a number of important measures of the reform, strengthening public finances as part of the agreements with the IMF. We can mention the effects of annual audit of engagements and improving the treasury management. Maintaining macroeconomic stability is ranked at the top of the list of the government's priorities. A stable and measurable fiscal framework will ensure that this objective is achieved successfully. Given these objectives, it is essential to ensure that public spending can be structured in such a way as to maximize the impact of development in the economy. The restoration of the integrity of the PBA and the increase of its role as being comprehensive in the annual budget execution will be a high priority, he said. The Minister of Integration, Klaida uh, Gjosha, appreciated the support of the U European Union in this regard. She said, establishing a special fund to support the reform of the public finance management through the sector of the budget for financial assistance is really good news, not only for the implementation of this reform. This is a clear sign that the European Union is convinced that this government will better manage the financial aid coming, uh, that is coming from the European citizens. The public financial management in Albania has seen improvements over the years, but there still remains much to be done, 
to strengthen the discipline of the public finances and to limit the opportunities for corruption. Christian Danielson, the General Director for Enlargement of the European Commission, pointed to a stronger management of public finances, transparency of financial reporting, and tax administration reform. The issue of food safety has sparked a reaction from three different institutions in the country. The Prefect of Tirana, Sadi Vorpsi, the Vice Mayor, Eno Bozdo, and the representatives of the National Food Agency, NFA, have spoken today about food safety, mainly in the markets. Prefect Vorpsi has raised a task force on food safety and asked for safety measures for the market at the former Dinamo plant. There is a lack of conditions in this market, she said. The products are being marketed without labeling. She invited other institutions to collaborate. On his part, the vice mayor, Eno Bozdo, gave his support in terms of food safety. We are in a food safety front. The problems in the markets should be solved. Our institutions are beside the task force. A concrete work plan for cooperation is, need is needed, he said. The NFA representatives stated that there are many businesses that are unregistered. We have closed 43 subjects because of high levels of moisture, they said. <clears throat> As the political struggle in Kosovo continues, the demand for a vote recount has been approved. Due to irregularities during the June 8th national elections, the Central Election Commission, or CEC, ordered a recount of the ballots that were cast in 51 polling stations across Kosovo. The Counting and Results Center will start to recount ballots in these 51 polling stations today, the CEC announced on Tuesday. The decision came after the Elections Complaints and Appeals Panel ordered the CEC to do the recount. Mul Descu, the chief executive of the panel, said that some 24 complaints had been filed by political parties and candidates for MP positions during the 24-hour period after the final election results were announced last week. The recount in 38 polling stations is related to ballots that were cast for seven candidates for MP positions in the Democratic League of Kosovo, one candidate for MP of the Democratic Party of Kosovo, and one candidate from the Initiative for Kosovo. The votes cast for the Alliance New Kosovo will be recounted in 13 additional polling stations. We expect to finalize the recount later today and then present the report to the CEC tomorrow, Burim Ahmetai, the head of the Counting and Results Center, told BIRN. All complaints filed at the Elections and Complaints Appeals Panel must be resolved before the election results can be certified. Once the certification is complete, the Kosovo president will be able to nominate one candidate to form the new government in Pristina. However, it is unclear what the decision will be. Hashim Tachi's ruling Democratic Party of Kosovo, which won the most votes, insists that it has the right to form the government. Ladies and gentlemen, that is all the news for this evening. Thank you for watching. Please join us again tomorrow at 6 p.m. for more Albanian news in English, only here on Ora News. Thank you and good night.